Okay, the Great Pyramids in Egypt are one of the seven wonders of the world for a reason. They're big, really big. Mathematically speaking, they're beyond precise. And considering they've been around since at least 2560 BC, they're as close to eternal as any man-made thing on your planet. But who built them? Some claim it must have been aliens. Others say brute force and hard work. Tonight's guest says it was, it was an advanced civilization with incredible technology that has since been lost, until now. Our guest has been studying the pyramids for over 20 years. He's the author of the new book, Lost Technologies of the Great Pyramid, and tonight he's here to share how those advanced technologies can benefit us today. Please welcome, beaming to us live from Oregon, Stephen Myers. Ah. Hey, thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Stephen, great to have you here aboard the mothership. Uh, now, when I was a kid, they told us the pyramid was built by slaves pushing giant blocks on rolling logs, up ramps, and eventually putting together this, this, uh, this, this amazing accomplishment. As you said, the pyramid's 400 and, you know, 45 stories tall, 5.9 million tons, the tallest building on Earth for 3,800 years, uh, yes. which is incredible, incredible, incredible. But you're saying that's not so. That's not how you, you believe it was built. Well, traditional uh, Egyptologists have offered up a hypothesis, okay. uh, which is what you have described, using strong back muscles, and a lot of force to create the Great Pyramid. But it's fascinating that uh, much of what they say has never been demonstrated. They, the largest stones of the Great Pyramid are 70 tons, and e the entire science of Egyptology has never moved a 70-ton payload, even one inch. So uh, they have a hypothesis, they have a story to tell, but they sure can't back it up using the scientific method. <laughs> All right, you sent us a bunch of animations. Let's start here at the beginning. Um, talk us through some of this. Let's start with a, you know, what, what well, are we looking we have, at? We have an all, we think that the Great Pyramid was built level by level, and so did Flanders Petrie, an early uh, researcher uh, of the Great Pyramid. And uh, it was built level by level, but it was also built using water and water locks, similar to the Panama Canal or the Erie Canal. Okay. And these water locks were used to lift the stones on barges all the way to the building site. So, so this is an example, example of one of these water locks that we're, we're talking about here. Right. The stone on barge would move into the water lock, and then it would rise up to the level of the casing stones, which are, which are uh, where, where it's going to go. The casing stones used to encase the Great Pyramid, and they were built with extreme precision and cemented together watertight. And this shows how in, in the early stages of construction, the uh, stones on barges were moved right to the building site. So that's how we think massive stones were moved in ancient times in a similar manner that massive objects are moved uh, in modern times. Okay, now that's a lot of water to move a distance, although, you know, thousands of years ago the Nile may have been closer, right? I mean, it was. You, you've got photographs here actually that, that don't go back that far. Certainly uh, the uh, location of the Nile is in scholarly debate when mm -hmm. the Great Pyramid was built. But even Herodotus, the 5th century BC historian, said that the Great Pyramid looked like an island surrounded by water. Okay. There was a wall around the Great Pyramid, and we think that wall impounded water. And also, we feel that uh, there was a water source provided by the original builders that might have been in the ancient Lake Maurice. There's a, there's a lot to it, but okay. water was provided to the uh, building site on the Giza Plateau. Okay, so if the, if the water was closer and it's available, uh, building these locks is not an unreasonable you know, thing to assume here. Take us through. Once, once the stones get up into, um, you know, up into the, the site, uh, you've basically got ponds waist deep, right? We've got a, another animation Yes. Here. Yeah, we, uh, we think that the stones on barges uh, were moved from the Nile River all the way up to the building site. And then the Great Pyramid was built level by level. And then uh, these stones on barges would move up the series of water locks all the way up into the building site. And some of the stones were set inside the pond, filling the pond with stones. And when that pond was filled up, another level of the Great Pyramid was completed. These animations are little clips from a video series that we have available at our website, which is thepump.org. 
Okay, right. And and so what's amazing to me though is this. You're, you're talking serious precision. This has to be watertight. If these if these locks leak in any way, you're out of business. Absolutely. It's interesting to note that the stones, the casing stones that still exist at the Great Pyramid are still cemented together watertight. Okay. So now, this theory is consistent with the direct physical evidence. Now, how long would this have taken? How long would this process of construction taken for, for something this big? Well, it's hard, it's hard to say, but water locks the world over operate 24 hours a day. So this system is very fast. The Erie Canal, which was built in the 1830s, moved the entire weight of the Great Pyramid in two years. And you think there's, there's other evidence of water in the region, like around the Sphinx and things like that? Oh, certainly. There's water erosion around the Sphinx enclosure, as well as on the Sphinx itself. And, and uh, inside the Great Pyramid, early researchers found what they called Nile Earth, which is sediment. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the construction of much of it being watertight and airtight, believe it or not, uh, lends credence to this type of research, this direction of research. Now, you sent us a, an image of the cross-section of the pyramids, and we know there, there are chambers inside, and there, there are various shafts. Let's take a quick look there. Um, so yeah, the, the Great Pyramid has many uh, chambers and passages, kind of a complex network. And what we think that the purpose of the Great Pyramid was, was that it was infrastructure for the civilization that built it, and in fact that it was uh, built to be a massive water pump. And the point was to get water from low to high, which helps fill those locks? Is that the uh, Yes, that is correct. The uh, first part of the construction, they, they created a pit, uh, an excavation 100 feet below the surface of the Great Pyramid in solid bedrock, and that acted like a pump to pump water to supply water for the construction process. And ultimately, the whole thing is a giant uh, water pump. We think that uh, uh, ancient mankind was able to pump water in a not not the same way, but but they were able to pump water to to create prosperity, just as modern mankind pumps water to create prosperity. So let's let's keep going through this process, though. Uh, as as the levels are are getting higher up here. Um, you've got, this is actually an earlier step, but so what are we looking at now? This is... Well, there, there were two large ships found uh, at the base of the Great Pyramid. They're called sun barges. Egyptologists ha have a story to tell. They say that these sun barges were used to move the pharaoh's carcass. Why they needed two of them for one pyramid is hard to say, but we think that they were used like cranes, like floating cranes, and people walking on them make the cranes pivot and they can quickly move a stone off of a barge and then when the uh the, the barge is moved out of the way and then the uh bar the uh floating crane is moved to the correct position the people move to the front and one of the stones is moved right into the uh, pond so that's how this process is very quick using water and the buoyancy of water has a lot of advantages in, in terms of stone manipulation, movement, and uh, setting and placing stones in place with extreme accuracy. Dennis is an independent Roswell researcher. He's done a lot of research on Area 51. He's looked into uh, the uh, Giza pyramids, and he is our guest tonight. How you doing, Dennis? I'm doing good. You did good with the name. <laughs> you know, you notice I'm not using your last name again because I don't want to mispronounce it. It's Balthaser. That's good. That's your civil good. engineering background, that put you in a really good position to understand how they built the pyramids. I wanted to talk with you a little bit about your research into the Giza pyramids. What? Who do you think built the pyramids? I have no idea, really, but I, mm -hmm. I can pretty well assure you that the three pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx were more than likely not built by the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. I think we have pretty good proof that, well, I know we do on the Sphinx. The, the Sphinx is deteriorated by, by water on the back of it, 
and consequently the the sphinx was covered up to its neck in sand until the 1800s they didn't even know there was a body there and they uncovered it and there was a body of a lion mm -hmm. and there wasn't that type moisture rainfall in that part of the world for at least 10,000 maybe 15,000 years so that automatically would predate the Egyptian civilization one of the researchers that I work with has done a lot of research on the pyramids, and he has come up with the civilization known as Khemetians, K-H-E-M-I-I-A-N. Mm -hmm. It was a black civilization that lived in North Africa about ten or 12,000 years ago, and he claims that they think that they had contact with star people. Ah, okay. Well, going to say that ETs built the pyramids, but I am leaning towards the possibility that the technology to build them could have come from the star people. Uh, there's no record anywhere in Egypt on how the pyramids of Giza were built. Mm -hmm. There's probably 80 or 90 other pyramids, at least, in Egypt, and they were probably built by the Egyptians, but if you look at them, they're all poor replicas of the three of Giza. Right. And, you know, people have argued, uh, well, scientists say that this, the pyramids were built by using ramps or using a lot of people and a lot of manpower to do it. Why is that not possible based on what you've researched on the pyramids? Well, the, the Great Pyramid contains two and a half million stones. They weigh anywhere from two to 70 tons each. Mm -hmm. Those stones were quarried miles away from where the pyramids are. So if you look at the time it took to quarry them, to cut them, to load them on a barge, bring them up the Nile River, transport them across to where the pyramids are, you would have had to set a, a stone about every 90 seconds. They claim there was 20 to 30,000 people that worked 20 or 30 years. If you do the math, it, it doesn't come out. They would have had to set a stone every 90 seconds, which is an impossibility. Yeah, and uh, the, just the transportation of the stones and then moving them, that would have been you know, practically impossible. Even with our technology today, can we duplicate the pyramids? No, we can't. Uh, I've done uh, some pretty big jobs with the Texas Highway Department on bridge construction, and we had one bridge that we were within two feet I think, when we got to the center of the span on a 1,200-foot span. Which wasn't bad engineering. We cut a piece, set it in place, and the bridge was complete. The pyramids are off a quarter inch on each side. Some of the stones are cut to within a fiftieth of an inch. You can't get a piece of paper between them. So they talk about using ramps to get these stones to the top. The, the big pyramid is 440 feet tall. I can't imagine how long a ramp they would have to have to get those stones up there. The other possibility was a spiral type ramp, which went around the four sides. But again, if you're going to do that in the time period that the Egyptologists tell us, it's not going to happen. It's not possible. I think uh, Nova on uh, public television a couple of years ago tried to duplicate building the pyramids, and they wound up using heavy equipment and still couldn't do it. But there are no records that we're aware of of who built them, why they were built, or when they were built. Exactly. And to build the ramp would be a project equal to building the pyramids, just to put the thing together, right? It would have to be, I haven't done the calculations on it, but it, the length of it would have to be tremendous. So do we know what's under the pyramids? We do not. But we do know that if you take all the land mass of the Earth, the dead center of all the land mass is exactly where the pyramids are located. And another interesting thing is their alignment. If you look at the pyramids from above, airplane, wherever, they are aligned exactly like the stars in Orion's belt in the constellation Orion. Two of them are lined up. The third one is just slightly offset. And if you look at the night sky at Orion's constellation, at Orion's belt, it's exactly the same. Now this this race of people, uh, the and let me see if I'm pronouncing this the Kamechis, Kamechians, Kamechians. Uh, tell me a little more about them and how they could be related to have having created this. Well, Stephen Mueller is one of our researchers on the on the advisory board of the Pyramid Association I belong to, 
And he met a gentleman in Egypt who has had all this documentation and all this stuff in his head for years. Mm -hmm. He has passed that on to his daughter. And uh, Stephen has spent hours and hours and hours with this man talking about this Phoenician civilization. And they have found out that they lived in North Africa. They were black civilization, mm -hmm. predominantly controlled by females, and supposedly had this contact with star people. If you look at the tools that the Egyptians had, again, you have a problem building these pyramids with the tools that were available. Right. And what kind of tools did they have, and what would they have needed to have built the pyramids? Well, they had copper tools mostly, and uh, there's been there's been research done on on the possibility of uh, being able to cut these stones using the tools they had. But the problem I have is the time factor. If you're talking 20 or 30 years with 20 or 30,000 people to do it, then it's an impossible task. You can't do two and a half million stones in that period of time. Exactly. What do you think the purpose of the pyramid was for? Well, Joe Parr, another researcher, believes that it was an energy machine of some sort. And the alignment with, uh, with the star systems. Um, if it were built by Egyptians, why would they do that? The Egyptians had a lot of knowledge about astronomy, and uh, we found other things over the years that uh, that indicate that they did have. And uh, you know, Stonehenge is another one that maybe had some connection with uh, with astronomy. Uh, the Native Americans uh, they talk about the Seven Sisters, the mm -hmm. Star System, Seven Sisters. So, you know, some of these older civilizations had a lot of knowledge about our stars that we don't have today. And do you believe that that knowledge came from an extraterrestrial connection? Ooh. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good question, huh? That's that's the $64,000 question. I don't want to commit to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I won't rule it out, mm. but... Uh, I, don't, I can't sit here and say yes as a matter of fact, but uh, the thing with the Commission civilization is interesting. If they, in fact, had contact with star people, like I said earlier, then I'm not saying ETs build them, but the technology could have well come from there. Yeah, very well could have. Mm -hmm.